and welcome to the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Networks. I'm your host, Dominic Aragon, Editor-in-Chief for TheRacingExperts.com. And I'm David Swope, host of the New Mexico Motorsports Report on ESPN Radio 101.7 The Team. And I'm Brooklyn, sideline reporter for the New Mexico Motorsports Report. A lot of racing action this weekend. Let's take you guys to Richmond Raceway for the final race of the NASCAR regular season. Martin Truex, like always, led the most laps. But in the end, it was Kyle Larson who came away with his fourth victory of the season. He's going to enter second in points and more on that later. But Joey Logano, who finished second in the race, had to win to make the playoffs, came one position short. Here's what he had to say post-race. Um, and we finished second, so uh, go figure. But overall, I'm proud of our race team, proud of the way we handled the pressure this week. Um, I said before the race started that this is kind of like Homestead uh, last year for us. It just come a little bit early. Perhaps arguably Penske's golden boy, one position short of making the playoffs. This is his first year running with Team Penske that he will not compete for the championship. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It was a must-win situation. But you could actually see from the start, he just didn't have it all together. That wasn't going to be his day. He wasn't going to get it done. Um, and I tell you, it just makes it really exciting. As a matter of fact, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, talk to Eric Jones earlier today. And I actually asked him, if I told you at the beginning of the season that you would finish ahead of Logano, you would finish ahead of Suarez, or you would finish ahead of uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., I mean, what are your thoughts on that? And he said, well, I would take that any day and would assume that I was in the playoffs. So it's, it's pretty uh, astonishing when you consider it. But I think it also stacks up to like the first year, 2004, when the chase format first came out. It's like, how is this going to play out? How interesting is it going to be? And I tell you, um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I think we're going to make our picks here in a little bit. But I think it's going to be very interesting, and it's going to be extremely entertaining. I think if you told me at the beginning of the year we wouldn't have Joey Logano Daniel Suarez and Eric Jones, Dale Earnhardt Jr., even someone like an A.J. Allmendinger missing the postseason. Clint Boyer, so many good top five cars out there that aren't going to compete for this championship. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, who would have thought that the number three would finally make it into the chase? Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. Ricky Stenhouse with two victories. Jimmy Johnson is very interesting because, you know, we, we, we got burnt last year, you know, going, you know, Jimmy Johnson's dead. He ends up uh, making the whole thing. But I tell you, his three victories uh, are only a couple of the times that he finished in the top five. So you got to really find out whether they can throw the switch or not. And, you know, I'm really, I don't, I don't think so. But you got a lot of neat stories with some dark horses like, you know, Casey Kane. Or, of course, I was joking earlier saying Matt Kenseth. Could Matt Kenseth run the table without winning? a victory, which was, you know, win the championship without an out of victory, because you can go into Homestead and not win that race and still win the championship. It hasn't worked out that way um, in the, the previous years, but it can happen. And boy, I tell you, wouldn't, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be absolutely amazing with all these wins you're in, and there still is mathematically three guys that could win this thing without winning a race. You're absolutely right. When you look at the history of the 69 years that NASCAR's had the main series, three times. A champion has won only one race, 1950 with, with Rex White, 1973 with Benny Parsons, and Matt Kenseth in 2003, an incredibly consistent season. Right. That ultimately made the Matt Kenseth rule the playoffs, the chase, whatever you'd like to call it. At Brooklyn, of all these three guys, Chase Elliott, Jamie McMurray, Matt Kenseth, these guys that can go out and win the title without winning a race potentially, who has the best chance to do it? I think Matt Kenseth had the best chance of doing it. I mean, I don't see it happening, honestly. <laughs> but out of the three, I would give it to Matt Kenseth. I think he's the most consistent. We said such an incredible year. He has won a couple pole positions. He's yep. won some stages. Chase and, and Jamie can't say that. And Kenseth has led a few hundred laps as well. Right. Both, like, a majority of those laps come to Richmond, but he is a great all-around driver. Right. He's finished second a few times. Does he advance past his first round? Well, I don't think so. I mean, of course, I'd love to see the chaos of him making it there, but I, I don't think that he necessarily advances um, past the first round. Now, of course, he's, he is driving a Toyota. Um, Toyota seems to be the dominant manufacturer right now. But, but I, 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 don't, I don't think that he advances. Um, but somebody's got to advance. And, sure. of course, uh, you know, Ryan Newman could be that person to uh, he's going to uh, is gonna make, that, <laughs> is gonna make that advance. But there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of great, great drivers out there. Uh, I really 
really like to see Ryan Blaney bounce back. I mean, he had such a, a strong run early, and he's kind of fallen back in the pack a little bit. So it'll be it'll be a, a, very interesting. But Chase Elliott, could Chase Elliott actually get his first win in the playoffs and move himself in a better position? I mean, it, it, like I said, it's going to be exciting. Uh, six cars, which is funny because I talk to people, and so many are like, well, what are those other drivers going to do now, now that they're down to 16? And I'm like thinking they're all still racing, you know, including a asking Eric Jones, I mean, what are you going to do um, for the rest of the season? What are your short-term goals? Sure, yeah. And, of course, you know, his short-term goal is, is to go out there and compete and win a race. You know, now he doesn't have to worry about the playoffs. It's all about how can the team get better, um, which is probably tough because the team's going to split at the end of the season. They're at least sure. they're going to stay there, and he's going to go over to JGR. So I did also want to say that I did ask him about the mullet. And I and I What's said, that thing and, off? yeah, I said, I said, what is the deal with the mullet? And he says, well, he hadn't really decided yet. And I said, well, I think the coach might decide for you um, when you get there at JGR. So we'll have to we'll have to see what happens with the mullet. But uh, I mean, Ryan Blaney is you know you know is still can, you know is carrying the mullet too. So I, Chase. yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on I, with those young guys. Did they all get together? You don't like the mullet? I don't. And honestly, I didn't know that Eric <laughs> Jones had one until I followed him on Twitter recently. Oh. And I was like. What in the world is going on with his hair? That is the first thing I thought. I like, yeah. need to cut that off. So uh, if you guys are listening, uh, the ladies don't like the mullet. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the only thing besides that in Richmond, there was some more drama on the racetrack with parked ambulance in the third stage. Almost really messing it up for Matt Kenseth or any of these other guys had someone on the outside one. Martin Truex, who ended up leading the most laps and, and ultimately DNF out of the race, shared his thoughts on that parked ambulance. Um, I was thinking that somebody that whoever hits the button to open pit road needs to pay attention to what's going on on the racetrack. That's what I was thinking. Um, it's not like it was a big surprise. It didn't happen in a split second. Um, the emergency vehicles were riding down the back stretch next to us as soon as we came off of two and continued all the way till the opening of pit road and they just left pit road open. So somebody obviously wasn't paying attention or wasn't doing their job properly. And uh, in my opinion, at this level, it's inexcusable. Well, Truex, even though he was a regular season champion, you can just tell from the photos with he and crew chief Cole Pern post race, was not a happy celebration there for a number of factors being wrecked out, having the caution come out with Derek Cope, but he was visibly upset with the ambulance thing. What happened there? Well, um, you know, of course, being uh, running a track before, the coordination of all of those things, there, there's a certain instinct that takes over immediately. Um, the people that do that, that, you know, to jump into the fire and pull people out of the car, it, it, a lot of it is on adrenaline, you know, muscle memory, um, and just, just training. Uh, so a lot of the original coordination, I've, you know, listened to the NASCAR Steve O'Donnell's position on it. What had happened is there, there is an initial group call that goes out um, in which all of them are to be, to be released you know, the safety truck, the ambulance, and all of that. Then basically, um, if something needs to be called off, they're called off individually. For some reason, that call didn't happen. And whether that call was, some other call was happening at the same time and there was interference on the radio, because that, that does happen um, quite a bit, is you have to know who's talking and who's talking and who's here at the particular time. But according to Steve O'Donnell, what happened is for some reason that call did not go out. So they were asked to stop where they were. Um, of course, uh, some of the others were asked to advance on, uh, but the, the the safety truck was actually asked to wait on the back uh, on the back straight, and so they got that call. So it was a very very awkward situation. Almost further up, further back would have been better. Where it was was absolutely terrible. Plus, what compounded that whole situation was the discussion um, that they had in drivers' meeting, in which they went over four wheels under that box again, and basically it was reiterated to him. That's why, you know, they were all like diving down there. Now, of course, NASCAR went back and said, of course, you know, if, if you had to avoid the ambulance, we were going to give you that. But after they, the tongue lashing, they actually got in the driver's meeting. They, they were quite confused as to what was going to happen there. So it, it was a, a real um, series of mistakes that happened. And, of course, then they came out and said, we will address them in the future. So, you know, that, that, that's what happens. But who would have thought, you know, they have an ambulance, you know, sitting on pit road. Well, not only that, you had the caution that brought out that incident to begin with for brake dust for Matt Kenseth hitting the brakes and locking the brakes up. NASCAR thought there was a motor blown on the racetrack. Or with Derek Cope with four laps to go up in the wall on the high line. 
especially with that situation, was NASCAR looking for an excuse to throw the caution? <laughs> to, to bunch them all up? Uh, I, love, I love a good conspiracy. Um, absolutely, they've been doing everything they can to manufacture a, uh, you know, a last second pass. I mean, they've, they've come out and said that that's what they feel like that they need to do to compete. Um, but if you think about it from a safety issue, if, you know, there would have been oil on the track. So they had to err on that side. And of course, you know, they got caught in there. Do, do I like to say there's a conspiracy and they tried to manufacture that? Absolutely. Was I sitting there in the seat watching the race, hoping there was going to be a yellow? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, so I got to say that, you know, I love a good conspiracy, but if you go back to protocol, they had to bring it out. Because what if there was oil on the track and they didn't, and they stacked up eight, nine cars in the wall right there? They have a completely different problem than uh, sitting here with Martin Truex. Now, Martin Truex has lost two that he should have had recently, and the benefactor, of course, is been Kyle Larson. So, you know, there's there's a there's a lot going on there. Is is Kyle Larson as strong going into the playoffs as he was? I don't know. So, it, w time waits to be seen. But Martin Truex has definitely earned this thing um, and, you know, I, I think that somebody's got to take him out. That's the car to beat right now. You're absolutely right. I and mean, when you take a look at the playoff standings, the field is set. Martin Truex is your points leader heading off into the Chicagoland Raceway this weekend. Kyle Larson about a 20 point gap back. Kyle Busch at 24 points back. Brad Kozlowski 34 points back. And we know these round these points are going to carry over into the round of eight. So it's safe to say it's going to be Martin Truex versus the field. I, I think that the betting line has got to be Martin Truex versus the field right now. Um, if, if you were somebody off the line you want to place some money on, um, you know, is, is that Denny Hamlin? Is that Kevin Harvick? Is that Brad Kozlowski? Those would be some of the people that are off the money line. Uh, but you can see from the, the ranking standings, it's a pretty solid field um, through the top eight. Um, from uh, from nine down, um, it's it's anybody's you know pick them it can go. But uh, you know I'm 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 looking forward to you know at the you know end of the uh, the show today we're all going to make some predictions. Um, and I and I honestly don't know where the tape is on my prediction going into this season. So um, I I can't say how bad it might necessarily have been. But I do think that I, I did pick Martin Truex. But I'm going to have to go back and find out. Well, I'll leave you guys with this with Jimmy Johnson. We were talking about it earlier, statistically one of the worst seasons of his career. Because he has the three wins, we're not talking about how this team barely scrubbed into the playoffs or how they missed the playoffs altogether. But his only three top fives are his three wins, and two of those wins came with leading not the most laps. Mm -hmm. So 48 team, are we going to see some struggles through this first round of the playoffs? Absolutely. I think so as well. All right, we'll just have to wait and see. Coming up on the other side of the break, we're going to be joined by Jeff Gordon in studio. You're watching the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Networks. Right in front of y'all, he missed it. First attempt still has it. Fires it in, y'all, from the angle. How'd he do it? It doesn't matter. It's in the back of the net. Speaking of urgency, there goes Kanye Jones. He could be gone. Jones at the 50. One man to try to catch up to him. He's not going to do it. Kanye Jones scores. Touchdown, Zandia, 80 yards. Bruer, double pass. Austin Heiss fires wide open. It's Derek Reyes, and he's going to score. Touchdown. Mahoney's got some room. Oh my One gosh. man to beat. Mahoney might be gone to the house. Don't see anyone catching him. Wow. Mahoney has gone touchdown. Just like that. Oh. After El Dorado scores, Mayfield oh. comes and strikes right back, Roger. In overtime for the win. Caleb Balin. He's in. Touchdown. And the Rams have won it.
What a big time game tonight. Callan Balin. And there goes Kanye Jones. This could make him more. He is off to the races. One man to beat, and he's not going to catch him. Touchdown, Sandia. He ran so hard and so violently. He ran out of his shoes, Scott. Start the party off in the first quarter. Here's the handoff to Milton. Look out. Milton's off to the races, shot out of the cannon, and he's going to score. Touchdown. How about the way he accelerated when he saw pursuit? School in Arizona. Bam, bam in the back of the net, finally. A set piece out for him. Don't forget, every ProView Network sporting event is on sale at our DVD store. Go to www.ProViewNetworks.com to buy your DVD today. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Duke City Sports Bar. Proud supporter of ProView Sports and New Mexico Youth Athletics. Catch all the sports action from high school, college, pros, and MMA on one of our 35 HD TVs. Start your night off right with any selection from our delicious menu prepared with fresh, never frozen ingredients. Duke City Sports Bar, Albuquerque's newest sports bar. Located on Eubank and Montgomery, dial 505-433-4020. Ladera Golf Course. Open in 1980, Ladera features a full 18 including spacious greens, a large driving range, roomy practice putting greens, and four large lakes. Surrounding Ladera, beautiful views of the Sandia Mountains to the east and volcanoes to the west. Ladera is a challenging city-owned course with the longest playing yardage of any other city courses. For weekend tee times and more information, call 505-836-4449. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. Well, I'm going to the Frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Looking for some exhilarating fun? It's at All Out Zone. All Out Zone showcases Nerf Dark tag games from team elimination battles to human versus zombies, pitting two teams against each other in fun, organized chaos with trained referees, music, and a full arsenal of Nerf blasters. You need team parties, birthday parties. We can customize the party to fit your needs. Visit us at the Coronado Mall. Give us a call, 505-444-6964. All Out Zone. All right, welcome back to the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Networks. 
I'm your host, Dominic Aragon, joined alongside analyst David Swope. We've got a very special guest here in the studio joining us. Yeah, sorry to disappoint. I am not the Jeff Gordon you probably were thinking of, but uh, <laughs> I do have the same exact name, first, middle, and last name, which is strictly a coincidence. So, yeah. But we weren't lying when we said Jeff Gordon was joining us on set now, were we? We, we were not lying. Um, but uh, I, I, I got to ask you, first off, what's your, what's your lucky number? Um, actually, I'm going to be honest with you. Every time I did, like, YMCA stuff, I picked 24. Well, awesome. I'm like, you know, I heard it my entire life. I might as well keep on going with this. And it was a lucky number for me. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. And there were some other weird coincidences along the way. Like when Jeff Gordon announced his retirement, it was actually on my birthday. Oh, wow. Which was two years ago, I think, is yep, in did. 2015. So, yep. so, yeah, some weird coincidences there. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Office Space. It's kind of like that, the guy whose name is Michael Bolton, and everyone asks him, like, oh, you must love Michael Bolton's music and stuff like that. It's a little bit like that, like living with this name. So, <laughs> yeah. So about how old were you when you first discovered that, hey, there's somebody out there with my name who's famous? Um, it was about second grade, and I was really into Power Rangers still back then, so awesome. it was kind of nice. off my radar, but then I started to, you know, pay more attention to Jeff Gordon and things like this. I had a DuPont jacket when I was little. Awesome. I had, like, the Matchbox cars, and I had all the things like that. I didn't like Dale Earnhardt for certain reasons, just because Jeff Gordon, you know, was my guy. You know, I had, like, a certain kind of weird connection to him. So, sure. Yeah. Did you ever get the chance to go to any races and go root him on? Um, I have haven't like you know like I did live in Texas for a while and I know there's some speedways out there but I unfortunately didn't get the chance to go out there and do it but it's something I want to do eventually that's for sure so sure. yeah did you ever get an, an opportunity to, to go out and drive a car or you know do, do one of those driver experiences or anything the, the closest I ever got to racing was I was real and fast and the furious in high school awesome. so racing down Montgomery on Friday night so it's probably the closest I ever went to something like that yeah, I mean, not but, that we yeah. condone that or anything yeah. oh no maybe <laughs> I didn't do that. Just kidding, guys. Well, I, yeah. I, I did beat a 440 dart one night on, on Montgomery in a, <laughs> in a 67 Nova Super Sport. But, but nice. we're not talking about that. But, uh, uh, but absolutely. So i got to ask you, what's your, your favorite Fast and the Furious? I like the fifth one. Oh, good choice. That's a good one. The last one was not good. I do not recommend that one right. at all. But yeah. Are like, we talking about seven or eight? I'm talking about eight. Like okay. When you, when you bring submarines into a car movie, you know, I think it's time to probably end that franchise. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. Well, I totally agree. I, I'll have to say that my favorite is actually number three, Tokyo Drift. That is a good one. And part of it is because that's that, there's a the time change. You know, I mean, this is, this is supposed to have to happen after. And how do they deal with, you know, uh, with uh, Paul Walker and the whole the whole bit, but now nah, the whole franchise the whole franchise is is, is great. I you know I don't like bringing the rock into it, but you know anyway you gotta the car the is everything. the star yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what they need to go back to. Like need to bring back all these old school cars yep. like the old Charger that um, Vin Diesel drives in those movies. Like I have a Dodge Charger now. It's not the cool one. It's the four door sedan one. But uh, yeah, I do love uh, sports cars, American Muscle everything like that. Um, favorite car of all time, I would say, is probably Dodge Viper. Nice. Uh, um, Very that's nice. just been ever since I was little. Um, I know NASCAR is normally Chevy. Is what so you're, you're not a GM is. guy like the, the four-time champion. I, I'm not. That's where we actually <laughs> differ is right there. So, yeah. You know, you know what I think we should do sometime, it'd be a lot of fun, is, is to reserve a, um, a rental car as Jeff Gordon. You know, and and you know, see what they see what they do, and you walk in with the 24 jacket and the whole bit, you know, because the whole gag about like when he takes the car out and does the test drive. Oh yeah. Oh, that would be. We we should do that. I'm we, game we for should anything. Do that. All right. So yeah. Set that up. All right. Watch your you know, watch. Your maybe, <laughs> we'll have a hidden camera segment on this show, which we go and do that. Let's do it. Can I, as long as I can have a fake mustache like that was that was that was, that yeah. was great. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The glasses, so. the hat, the whole bit. Yeah. Let's do the whole thing. And I, I maybe I'll just wear a Dupont jacket just because you know. Well, it'd you know. be exalted. Now, since it's not DuPont. Oh, see? But still, well, the same, you guys still the same are thing. the racing experts, and I am I am just over here as the guest. So, yeah. <laughs> we this love it. Why. Yeah. So, having that name Jeff Gordon, is there any fun stories or any cool experiences that have become, or that have come out because you've had that Like name? free food? Did you ever get free food for <laughs> I mean, me and Dominic, we go, we go to the heart hospital to get food sometimes, and they always write, Dumb. like, 24 <laughs> on my breakfast burritos, or they drew a car on it last week, which mm -hmm. was funny. So, like, there's surprises like that. Uh, first day of school was always really weird because, like, 
they would call all the kids out by their first name only. It's like, oh, is Matt here? Is what? Is Stacy here? Is Jeff Gordon here? I'm like, please don't say my full name. <laughs> now I have to explain things. Right. And no, it was not a coincidence. He didn't come along till I was like five or six, and then you know it kind of went from there. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, it, it, you ever been to a sprint car race? I mean, you had a chance to go and watch. I mean, that's where Jeff Gordon got his start, you know, his uh, uh, wing sprints. I mean, I think that we got one probably coming up this weekend. We hey, we get some free passes for Jeff Gordon out of Sandia Speedway. I'm I'm down. You guys give me some All right. free food. You give me some free passes. I am down. I hope for Charlie's anything. not watching this show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Charlie, I don't know who you are, but uh, <laughs> thank you in advance. So, oh, yeah. You have the Jeff Gordon at your racetrack. Yeah. You know, the funny thing about that, like, on Twitter, like, I was tweeting at Jeff Gordon one day. Like, he's never responded. But, like, I was looking at Twitter handles, and then, like, the real Jeff Gordon is available. Ooh. I'm not going to do it because... Or maybe I should. I don't know. But yeah. Dom, do it. Yeah. You should I get should it. do it and scalp the domain. Right? <laughs> you should. Yeah. Scalp yeah. the handle. You might as, and do like the real Jeff Gordon.com. That could be your website too, Dom. Like, oh, there we go. I'll have a redirect to the race yeah. or to the New Mexico Motorsports Report.com. All good. <laughs> yeah. We could put up a landing page and then redirect. Yeah. Yeah. I can. There we go. I, I like that. it. See, all these plans are coming together. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking my time on this show so far. <laughs> so, yeah. So, what brought you to sports? I mean, you know, I mean, what, you know, what's your background? Um, like, I, I always wanted to be a sportscaster ever since I was in second grade. And, um, like, I, I started doing some stuff out here. And then I finally got my first on-air job in Midland, Texas. And um, I was really bad for a really long time. I'm like, this person should not be on TV. And I was on at like five or six in the morning. I would do like, I would take whatever the guys did at night and I would change it up in the morning and everything. And I was really scared for a long time. And eventually, I, like things got better. I got a little more comfortable. And it was fun. Like covering sports is uh, something awesome because like, you know, not a lot of people get to do it. And and it was awesome for the time I got to actually be a part of that. So. What's your favorite sport? Um, football, uh -huh. NFL. So um, Broncos game. Spoiler alert, I was going crazy at Buffalo Wild Wings last night. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a fun time. But they won, so yeah. I'm happy. Wow. Yeah. Being a Chiefs fan, you know, we, oh, well. we, we basically had our Super Bowl. So we're, we're, we're good. We're done now. Good for another so. 16 weeks. We're good for another 16 weeks. That, that might have been the only time I went for the Chiefs in my life. But, uh, yeah. It worked out. Well, as a Broncos fan. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a higher I'm glad Dom's between there, us so as yeah. a Packers fan. Yeah, exactly. So neutral Super Bowl here. 32, never forget. So, 30, yeah. 31 to 24. No, oh, yeah. Well, exactly. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could bring out 24. numbers all day. Yeah. There we go. Almost 24. No, yeah. 24. Look at all these coincidences, right? Yeah, it's yeah. total coincidence. Exactly. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This was not planned at all, so, yeah. <laughs> So what else keeps you busy during the week? Um, like, I'm a news producer, so um, yeah, that's what keeps me pretty pretty busy during the time. Um, got a, like, I got a German Shepherd puppy at home that uh, takes the rest of my time. So yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, Did you name I'm, the dog Jeffy or Gordon or something? Um, like his name is Peyton for oh, okay. obvious reasons. Oh, so, wow. yeah. yeah. There you go. There's a little curveball. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I didn't want to name Jeff Gordon Jr. I think that would have been a little weird, but yeah. Yeah, that might be. You, you, you get still got that one in the chamber. You know, oh, so, I could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I could <laughs> use that anytime I want if I want to do that to a, like a potential kid's life in the future. Right. Yeah. 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 JG yeah. Jr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, yeah. we're, we're we're going into the playoffs, but we got to ask you a little fantasy football. I mean, what's mm -hmm. what, what, what's the best sleeper pick? Well, I mean, it, we were talking about the Chiefs. I mean, of course, you know that had to have been a heck of a pick if anybody played him. But uh, what's 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 a good uh, a good pick for uh, fantasy football? I mean, this year, I think a lot of people were they didn't know when Ezekiel Elliott was going to come back, right. and right. they took him in the second or third round. That was obviously didn't work out, so whoever got him probably has paired him with a really good first round pick. So who, whoever picks Zeke this year, I think is probably going to do really well. And I'm not just saying that because he's on my team. So oh, okay. yeah. yeah. How are your Broncos going to do this season? Um, Trevor looked really good last night for the very first game. Um, going forward, the offensive line has improved. Um, I'm thinking maybe playoffs again, but it's a pretty tough division, so we'll see. Is, is Simeon a scary name to say on TV? It is, and it's really hard to spell. It took me a really long time to actually <laughs> learn how to spell that name. So, yeah. Awesome. 
Excellent. Well, Jeff, we appreciate you stopping by our studios, and you're welcome back anytime. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So you can read more about Jeff Gordon in this month's edition of the New Mexico Motorsports Report magazine, set to hit shelves this Friday. You can pick up a copy at any of the local Napa Auto Parts dealers throughout the state and at Yearwood Performance and at Car Crafters. I'm Dominic Otagon, and you're watching the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Networks. Garden Sorts Team Sales is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game. Garden Schwartz Team Sales features fine products and apparel from Wilson, Shut Sports, Speedline, and Russell Athletics. We offer custom embroidery and screen printing services for all of your school or club needs, from team uniforms to school letter jackets. Specializing in all sports and serving all communities, from big schools to small schools, from up north to down south, or all points in between, Garden Schwartz Team Sales, for great prices, friendly staff, and quality products, call Garden Schwartz Team Sales today at one 800 880-7767. That's 1-800-880-7767. Since 1939, Garden Schwartz Team Sales is a proud supporter of New Mexico Youth Athletics. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Gecko's Bar and Tapas, a proud supporter of ProView Networks. It's been a fan favorite spot for food lovers and sports fans. With not one, but two great locations, including outdoor patio, an atmosphere you won't want to miss. Geckos, off Academy and in Knob Hill. Welcome back to the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on ProView Networks. And joining us right now is a uh, legend from racing, four-time Indy 500 winner, Al Lunzer. How are you doing today, Al? Good, David. And you? I'm Everything, doing... Everything's good with you? Everything is fantastic. I, golly, that's good. I'm glad I'm able to still be here talking with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I was going to ask you, how's your summer going? It's doing good, you know. Sue and I are up in Chama, yeah, uh, up there, and we're enjoying the, the cooler mornings now, and and uh, getting ready for the snow to come, so I can go snowmobiling again. Well, we'll get to the <laughs> snowmobile racing in just a second, but but tell me about the alpacas. Well, my wife Susan is the one that has the alpacas. Yeah, all I do is just kind of look at them. <laughs> And when they talk to me, they they not sure what I am. So, but no, they really need animals. There, and Sue's got them kissing her and, and everything. She's a remarkable lady about Absolutely. taking care of animals. Absolutely, that yeah. well, that, that's fantastic. But it's snowmobiling, so you guys still get out there and and uh, race each other with the snowmobiles? Or? Well, that's not anymore, but, but <laughs> sure it's not. I still go out riding, you know, right. those 
those days of souping them up and, and uh, going after who's the quickest, those days are over, David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I believe that. Uh, um, but, but anyway, um, appreciate you coming on the show. Um, we haven't had an opportunity to, uh, to interview you yet on our TV show. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you a, a little bit about the museum. Um, you continue to, uh, uh, to expand and put new things in there. Right. Uh, but, but talk a little bit about, uh, especially the expansion has been a couple of years now. Yes, it's three years old now. The wow. Thing. And so, you know, we have a, uh, I understand, a Duesenberg, 1930 Duesenberg, wow. that's going to be loaned to us wow. at the museum. And if you've ever seen a Duesenberg, I mean, these are beautiful, beautiful yeah. cars, you know, 1930. Yeah. And uh, so we're anxious to get it. And, and so you'll have to come down and see it because Absolutely. it is a work of art. Do you work with other museums that you kind of like will trade a car or yes. anything like that? How, how does that yeah. work? It works out because we, we, we have a car up at uh, Johnny Unser's okay. at the go-kart track in Denver. Great. We have one in Phoenix at the uh, World of Speed down there museum. Awesome. And uh, we have several of them around and, and plus, we have, you know, cars that they've loaned us, so we kind of keep changing the atmosphere right. in the museum of new new items to where you don't see the same thing all the time. Yeah, this, it's a neat combination of um, education and history, and 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 I, I love when you bring other things in too because I mean, you guys are open. I mean, other than uh, at Thanksgiving and Christmas, I That's mean, you're open daily, uh, ten to four. It can go down there and seven days. A week. Yeah, and, and you're often there too. You know, so you get some yeah, get some people, stories. You know, it's really neat because I'll walk in there or be in there, and some people come in, and they just kind of look. You know, they look at you, <laughs> and I'll say, "How are you today? Welcome to the Unser Racing Museum. You really him?" <laughs> I said, "Yeah, that's I'm just me, another person." <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty amazing that it's been 30 years since your last victory. Um, how, what kind of perspective is that? I mean, it, does it feel like it was just yesterday? Does it feel like it was a lifetime ago? It seems like a long time ago, David, but yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. In other words, you, 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 I can still look back and remember, yeah. you know, that day. And uh, again, I wished I could do it again. Yeah. You know, I, that's why the museum is so important to us down there, because it brings back all the memories of past wins and and bad days where things didn't go good you know you right you have those as you do in your work i'll bet you absolutely so therefore it, it it's it, it's a beautiful thing to be able to look around and and remember what you did well the other day uh, just because i had nothing better to do i was thinking about from Bobby's first win to Junior's last win, um, you guys had a 65% winning percentage, right. the Unzers. That, that's unprecedented. Yeah, I mean, that, well, that's, I mean, absolutely amazing. Three of us, you know, thank goodness. Yes, yeah. My brother, whoever he is, <laughs> and, my, <laughs> and my son. He who we do not mention. Yes, that's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> now we, we still enjoy talking and, and uh, our reminiscing about old races and he says you remember when you cheated and I said no no Bobby that's you right so <laughs> so it's fun I mean was there a favorite driver or because I, I you know I you know somebody that that you worked with that is probably like the best friend you had out of that is any you know people that you still well, David, stay in contact with yeah there's lots of them in yeah. other words you when you ask a question like that you know Foyt yeah Arnelli Jones yeah Jim Herdebees Jim McElreath there's just so many yeah that when I was coming up that I just envied yeah you know I would look at him and say man, I hope one day I can be like they are, or one day I hope I can outrun them. Right. <laughs> you know, and it, it's a, and then all of a sudden a dream come true, you know, right. you're, you're competing against them and then you're outrunning them and, and uh, you know, I can just remember 
uh, looking at their rings and everything, you know, and thinking, boy, I, will, I hope one day I can have one of those. Yeah. And sure enough, it came true, and, and it's neat. I'm glad you mentioned AJ Foyt because uh, I've had a conversation with, with several people about, you know, probably the, the best pure driver. Um, because he he won in you know stock cars as well as um, as open wheel and, yes. um, and I mean in, is he as is he as fiercely competitive in in real life as as, as he seems? Yes, he is. In <laughs> other words, he he you know I uh, look at him still today and um, you know just admire the man because he he did race. He raced hard. When you raced against him you best behave right because he'll behave and if you don't behave he doesn't behave and he's a man that you really don't want to come up against because of his size <laughs> yeah. and his temper well and i mean even even as an owner uh you know a couple years ago wasn't it uh um that uh, one of his drivers um, didn't actually win the race, like our Land Dyke, right, uh, was the winner, and, yeah. and he went up and basically got in his face, and it's like, wow, I mean, he's still... Yeah, he. I don't think he's like that anymore. <laughs> Foyt, I think Foyt uh, tries to be the gorilla, and right. he, he really is, and he has a big heart, and he's a, he's a just a good man, and he's a well-behaved race car driver, honest. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't appear to be, but he is. Wow. So I, I, I was curious, I mean, growing up, racing against your brother and, and the family, and, you know, whether it was, you know, Pikes Peak or um, even, I mean, Manzanita. I mean, do you, do you have any, any stories of uh, racing over at Manzanita? Oh yeah, there are several features I should have won over there, and <laughs> somehow or another, somebody else outrun me. Yeah, you know, and his name was Bobby. <laughs> but Bobby, you know, he was good on the half miles and mile race tracks, and uh, so. But it's just a wonderful thing, you know. We have that Eka car that. Yeah. In, in our museum. In fact, Great. it's in Phoenix right now Great. at that uh, museum down yeah. there, World of Speed. So yeah. it should be coming back pretty soon, but it's a neat car. Yeah, that's fantastic. Talk a little bit about the Pikes Peak. Um, I mean, what, what, I mean, you guys dominate the Pikes Peak. I mean, that, that's the only track that you have a higher winning, the Onsers have a higher winning percentage than Indy. I mean, yeah. what, what's that, you know, what was that like? Pike Peak was a place that you do not make mistakes because when you go over the edge, you go over it's the a edge. long ways. And now it's pavement up there, all paved. Yeah. But in our days, it was all dirt. And you really had to understand, you know, how the, the dirt was being formed. Right. So you could get the right traction. Right. Say, and it's just funny if people, they ask over the years, they says, how'd you ever figure out how to run a road course? I says, have you ever been to Pikes Peak? <laughs> and that's what Pikes Peak is, is a road course, but it's dirt instead of pavement, say. So you get a, you got a lot of both, you know, right. of learning how to run on dirt and you would have learned how to run a road course. Well, that's... Uh, that's fantastic, Chris. You guys, you know, um, did amazing there. Um, but you know, I mean, local local family had a business, had to uh, um, you know grow up in the family business. I mean, what was the what was the work ethic? Um, you know, working for your father and uh, you know working on cars. Daddy was a very straight man about saying, you start a job, you finish a job, and that goes through your whole life. And when we started racing, that's what he said. He says, you're going to race, you're going to race, and you're going to race hard. You understand, young yeah. man? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> what about like, um, like, like winning as, as the ultimate goal? I mean, was it more you went out there and you gave your effort and, you know, God willing, you know, it worked out? Yeah, you never know, David, when you first start in anything like that that you are going to become successful. Right. And it's just a great feeling to be able to look back now and say, well, in 1965, I went to Indianapolis as a rookie 
man, I was scared to death, you know, and then to leave that place being a winner. Right. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's a, an accomplishment. You just, it's very high. Yeah. That's fantastic, and I invite you uh, to go and check out the Unser Museum, 1776 Montano. Al's got stories, many, many <laughs> stories like this, uh, and I'll, I'll leave you with one thought. Uh, one time we were there with a banquet and um, for the track, and I look over, and you're just sitting on the tire of the car just listening, and I was thinking to myself, this is quite a distraction that a four-time Indy 500 winner would take the time to sit there and see what we were doing. And, uh, and that happens all the time at the museum. So I, I really appreciate you coming in. Well, I appreciate you having me, David, and I hope that uh, you invite me back one day because I, I enjoy talking with you. Great, well, I really appreciate that. All right, we got a whole lot more coming up, including we're gonna be talking about some local events that are going on this weekend. We appreciate you tuning in on the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on ProView Networks. Ladera Golf Course. Open in 1980, Ladera features a full 18 including spacious greens, a large driving range, roomy practice putting greens, and four large lakes. Surrounding Ladera, beautiful views of the Sandia Mountains to the east and volcanoes to the west. Ladera is a challenging city-owned course with the longest playing yardage of any other city courses. For weekend tee times and more information, call 505-836-4449. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Looking for some exhilarating fun? It's at All Out Zone. All Out Zone showcases Nerf Dark tag games from team elimination battles to human versus zombies, pitting two teams against each other in fun, organized chaos with trained referees, music, and a full arsenal of Nerf blasters. You need team parties, birthday parties. We can customize the party to fit your needs. Visit us at the Coronado Mall. Give us a call, 505-444-6964. All Out Zone. Duke City Sports Bar. Proud supporter of ProView Sports and New Mexico Youth Athletics. Catch all the sports action from high school, college, pros, and MMA on one of our 35 HD TVs. Start your night off right with any selection from our delicious menu prepared with fresh, never frozen ingredients. Duke City Sports Bar, Albuquerque's newest sports bar. Located on Eubank and Montgomery, dial 505-433-4020. Welcome back to the New Mexico Motor Tours Report here on ProView Networks. It's time to talk a little bit about local racing. Um, this weekend, Saturday, September 16th, we've got the Rattlesnake Rally at Sandia Motor Speedway where the non-wing sprint cars are going to hit the oval track. Um, also, at ABQ Dragway, we've got the Street to Strip, Street Legal Drags, Test and Tune, and Time Trials. Driver price is just $20 and spectator price is $10. A lot of cool happenings locally going on. Also on the national scene, we're wrapping up a championship this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. The final race of the IndyCar season takes place this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. Six drivers are el eligible for the title. Joseph Newgarden enters the, uh, the race with a lead over Scott Dixon of just three points. Hilo Castroneves, Simon Pagino, Will Power, and Alexander Rossi still have a shot to win the title. And I tell you, it's, it's going to be a battle. And uh, when you look at it, Scott Dixon having an opportunity uh, to get this done uh, is kind of scary out of everybody. But I was thinking to myself of all of the Penske drivers, who has the best shot? Simon Pagino won last year. Will Power 
um, has has won. Helio Castro Neves is the master of finishing second. Could Helio Castro Neves actually be the benefactor of the terrible race that Joseph Newgarden um, had uh, on the last outing at Watkin Glen? It's going to be worth seeing, but I tell you, the real winner is everybody afterwards when they get to go to Napa Valley and enjoy it. I mean, you know, you should probably tell us about how good the wine is in Napa Valley. Oh, it's great. We've had some experiences out there at <laughs> Sonoma Raceway. Those are stories for another day. Absolutely. But, no, Sonoma's a great way to wrap up the championship. And yep. There's six guys eligible. Only two control their own destiny, though. So yeah. Scott Dixon can go out and win. And he controls his championship hopes. Same with, with Joseph Newgarden. But yep. look at Helio. He could go out there, win, lead the most laps, and he could still finish second in points. Well, and I think that most of the drivers would be happy with that. Of course, they're not they're, they're not going to say that. Uh, but the question would be, would they be more happy with Helio Castroneves winning um, and staying in the series or losing and going on to, you know, sports car racing? So it's, you know, kind of kind of hard to say there. But he, he is a fan favorite. A lot of the drivers... Uh, really like him. Probably the least liked out of the whole group is, is Will Power. But I will say that the neat battle that could come down is if the cards were right for Alexander Rossi, you could have a battle between two Americans for a chance to win this championship. And that hasn't happened in a long time with Alexander Rossi and Joseph Newgarden both having a shot. Newgarden has just been on fire other than Watkins Glen. just wasn't a good race for him. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe, you know, the, that freshman luck, maybe he He'll, maybe he'll get it done. No, absolutely. And, and looking at how far back Alexander Rossi is, yeah, he's going to need a lot of things happen to his competitors to try and win that title. Well, almost everybody's got to wreck out together, and they got to wreck out early. And he's got to have the pull, so he's got to get all the extra bonus points on top of it. Make it a uh, points day. Absolutely. And if he was to end in a tie, uh, we could go to a tie break if it came down to Helio Castroneves and Simon Pagano because they all only have one win. Actually, correct that. If he wins that, he would win on the tie break. So he could end in a tie with those two because, of course, they would not have won. It's all about math, Dom. It's all about math. And I tell you, he's probably too, he's too far back, um, but mm -hmm. still exciting. that Because in the past, they've gotten to where, you know, this is basically decided with one or two races to go. Um, not as much to deal with, which is why they put the double points race in, which I'm against, by the way. But that's why there's a double points race for the last race. Certainly makes it more interesting. Now, looking at this race weekend coming up, we know Helio Kesterneves might be his last race here in right. Who are some other drivers that may be making their final start? in this series. Honestly. In IndyCar, well, Tony Kanaan, for one, might be. Uh, I, I'm still fascinated by the fact that um, the manufacturers tend to stay with the drivers versus being, you know, the sponsor kind of follows that whole thing and they dictate that. But Tony Kanaan might be without a, a ride because of the changes that are going on in Andretti. Andretti is staying with Honda, uh, and of course we know that Alexander Rossi is going to be there. Because I really wonder if, if Helio Castroneves was gone, then I know that the captain Pinsky was going to go after Rossi and try and get Rossi. So I think that that's why all that thing happened. But as far as like silly season stuff, nothing is better than um, what's going on over with uh, Smithfield and exactly. Almarola. And uh, I know Brooklyn's got some information on that. Motorsports.com is reporting that Smithfield's Foods will be pulling their sponsorship from the number 43 car at the end of the season. Smithfield's Foods has sponsored the team in Amarola since 2012. The outlet also reports that the company should be moving over to Stuart Haas Racing next season. Amarola is free agent at the end of the season. And, and to add to that drama, Danica Patrick released a statement today. She will not be back with the 10 team in 2018. She said it was her honor to drive for Tony Stewart and Gene Haas, but knowing that sponsorship does play a vital role in professional sports, she's out and she wishes the best of luck to the driver and the sponsor as they move forward to 2018. Is she done at the end of the year? Is she running her last 10 races of her Cup Series career? I hope she's not. I think I'm um, being a female in NASCAR, it's important to have one. And um, I hope she's not gone because I think it's going to lose a big fan base if she does. She did bring a lot of following over from IndyCar. Yes, she did. Um, I, I don't think she's going to return to open wheel racing. Um, really, if you take a look at it, with what she's been doing with her clothing line and, and you know different things, um, she's got herself set. I mean, she's she's ready to do something else. And of course, you know, I mean, she may be wanting to have a family um, and to enjoy the other fruits of her labor and you know the rest of the rest of her life. But uh, I likewise, you know, think that it'd be a little bit of a loss um, to lose her. I mean, she is she is one of the fan favorites. Um, 
um, it did bring other people into the sport. But I think likewise, the, the reason that uh, Smithfield is moving, and I really, it hasn't been announced yet, but we can go ahead and basically talk about it now. I think uh, Almirola is going to wind up in that car. I think Almirola is going to be in the 10. Smithfield is very happy with him. And, you know, and they want him to have a chance to be successful. And I think that at, at Stuart Haas, he has that chance. So you bring the backing. At least he's got a one-year shot, right? Because we know that that seat's being kept warm for Cole Custer mm -hmm. eventually. But Al Marola's got a shot to actually show what he could do. What that does is that it does open up the 43 and Bubba Wallace an opportunity to come into the 43. And I think that that is going to happen as well. And I think that likewise is going to be very good for the sport. Um, so. So, you know, these seats are starting to, to fall. You know, Matt Kenseth, where's Matt Kenseth going to fall? He's still out there. It's absolutely amazing when you consider how some of the people aren't coming back um, or we don't know where they're going to be. And, and they're starting to run out of chairs. And the, the sponsorship situation is very, is very, very important. But, but Smithfield and what Al Marola has done for them, he is a fantastic spokesperson for that. Yeah. Now, I trashed on him last time. We all know that I said that the 43 would not wind up in Winter Circle unless someone else was driving it. I might have been right. I didn't necessarily mean it was going to go this way, but but uh, Tony Stewart, very very smart businessman. If he sees that opportunity, um, and you know Al Marola going, you know basically, um, uh, you know into another Ford, you know it's not as big a difference. You know, and this is somebody that he sees as a personal friend. Looking at, at Tony Stewart's personal things outside of the racetrack, Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse, Eric Al Marola, these are people who he associates with outside of racing and considers his friends. Right, absolutely, and and you know nothing makes more friends than winning. So it gets over there and starts winning. But you got to wonder, you know, I mean, what, what's going to happen um, with Kurt Busch? You know, I mean, Kurt that's Busch. That's still up in the air. Yeah, that's that's up in the air. I mean, I I, I really, really believe that um, that uh, Richard Petty Racing, uh, Richard Petty Motorsports is going to stay a one-car team. I mean, when you saw them uh, reduce the size of their of their leasehold, the situation is is they're going to stay a one-car team. Uh, it they got to keep the 43 in the sport, though. How can you have a race? I mean, it's going to be hard enough not to have the 24 in a race. You know, I mean, we're going to have the 24, but not have the number five in the race. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how all this thing sh uh, shuffles out. Maybe Richard Petty needs to get back behind the wheel, use some of those past champions provisional, and try to bring some sponsorship to his team. He could. He hasn't run in over 25 years, though. Richard pa Petty was always my family's favorite, so <laughs> I'm for go. it. Absolutely. So I got I got to ask you now that you know now that we're at the playoffs. I mean we get to we get to prognosticate. And so uh, Brooklyn, who do you think that uh, your final four are going to be? Well, Ryan Newman's my favorite, so he's going to be my wild card. Um, Truex, Larson, Ryan Newman, and I'm going to say Kyle Busch. A lot of good picture. I mean. We had a really cool opportunity earlier this year to go see Ryan Newman's final career win at Phoenix International Raceway. Right. So. <laughs> he's just upset because Jeff Bodai doesn't race anymore. Hey, he's six years removed. Hey, we, we, could, we could get into fantasy racing at some point <laughs> and have these conversations of who's the greatest fantasy racer of, of all time because then I'm going to have to go Cale Yarborough because Cale Yarborough on any given day could whip anybody's butt in NASCAR right now. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'd like, I, I'd like to see that. That, that would be worth, that would be definitely worth seeing. Um, what, what were your what were your picks then? Well, I kind of alluded to the fact earlier that Martin Truex Jr. is in a class of his own right now. Mm -hmm. So we, I personally feel he's going to be competing for that title. You can't really look past Kyle Larson, who's going to have those points advantages over 14 other competitors. So I think your 78 and 42 are safe picks. But then Jimmy Johnson and that team have always come alive at the playoff time. We always talk every year. It seems like they do worse and worse and worse in the regular season. But they just hit a little light switch there, and they, they turn on during the playoffs. So I think the 48 car would be the third one. And that fourth pick could be anybody, like a Matt Kenseth or a Brad Keselowski, who can just go out there, score the stage points, score the, the victory or two that will advance you to the next round. Because remember, a win in any of these next rounds it automatically advances you to the next round. Mm -hmm. Well, so I don't know if you saw the report that Lowe's no longer carries light switches. So basically, the switch is not <laughs> going to turn on for Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Martin Truex is the odd-on winner. If Kyle Larson makes it to the final four, it's hard to bet against him um, on at Homestead. Um, and of course, we all know that he's my sentimental favorite. So I, I don't even 
and have to, to waste a fantasy pick um, a, uh, on that one. Uh, Kyle Busch, we all know I'm not a fan of his, um, but he gets it done. My fourth is actually going to be Kevin Harvick. I mean, it's hard to pick against Kevin Harvick, uh, but, you know, this is also on tape. I could erase this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't even matter, right? And it won't even matter. Well, it looks like we're out of time here on the New Mexico Motorsports Report. For Brooklyn Green and for David Swope, I'm Dominic Otagon. Tune in next time.